lakes and water quality. Um, it's like the, it's the soil stability, the buffering capacity of, of, of the streams into, uh, uh, into the uh, lake, buffering capacity of the hemlock along the streams, I think, is tremendous. Um, not only that, the uh, hemlock ameliorate the temperature in the summertime in the streams mm -hmm. and make it habitable by brook trout. If there weren't hemlocks around here, we wouldn't really have much brook trout. Um, it also is very important for wildlife uh, in, in, uh, in the wintertime and in the summertime when the temperatures are high. Um, and one of the problems they're finding in these areas where they're <coughs> getting a lot of mortality of the hemlocks, they're getting a lot of invasive species in to take their place. Um, invasive plant species. So ecological concerns, stabilize shallow soils, <coughs> moderate stream temperature, shelter for animals, trout, need them, and uh, the critical habitat for migrating birds as well. Um, there are management challenges. There's no resistance in eastern hemlocks. They've been doing some experiments trying to hybridize hemlocks, or the, and they've also been looking at what is it about the chemistry of the Japanese hemlock that, that resists, that resists the, uh, the, the... And right now, it's just very in the infancy of that kind of work. It's, I'm glad they're doing it. It's very interesting. But right now, we need time to let, these, to let this research get going. Um, very difficult to detect at low population levels. If you already have an infestation like those that I've found around here, it's, it's already dispersed far beyond that point that we're at. And so it's like delimiting the exact area that it's in is very difficult. Um, there are no area-wide insecticidal treatments. Um, it's only on a tree-by-tree -tree basis because basically, if you do any kind of aerial uh, 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 aerial application or, or something that, that doesn't cover every single bit of the tree. It's those few individuals that will survive, and with the reproductive potential that these aphids have, they're gone, they're taken over. I mean, you, you just put it through a bottleneck that's allowed those that can survive for whatever reason, pesticide resistance, that's how pesticide resistance comes around, mm -hmm. although I'm not saying that's the case here. Uh, you know, it's like they'll take off. The, uh, um, you can, however, treat individual <coughs> trees, and that's a really valuable tool. That's what they're using down in, in, in the southern Appalachians, where they're identifying trees that they feel are really important, and they're poisoning those trees, or poisoning, putting the insecticide into the tree, so it's a systemic insecticide, and so they're preserving those trees, and it's actually a very effective treatment. They found that the treatment lasts for up to seven years. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're buying time that way. They've identified the trees they're focusing on, and they're going to keep those trees alive for the genetic resources. Um, right. Back. Is the insecticide specific to this bug? Or this no, it's metacloprid. It's actually, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a vet, and he says, oh, I use that on my bug, on my dogs. <laughs> it's a uh, plead thick collar. It's a plead thick yeah. collars. Right. Uh, it's a very common uh, uh, insecticide, very broad, um, and that's one of the problems. Uh, how do you first. treat a tree? Oh, I'll get to that. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to cover my favorite first, though. It's biocontrol. Um, because I think, really, the only long-term solution that we have to this problem is biological control. Uh, biological control is very difficult to implement. It takes years and years because we've learned lessons from the past. <laughs> The host specificity studies alone take years. Uh, you got to really be sure that that's all they eat is the target organism, and that's really good. Mm -hmm. But you know, we've been working on biocontrol for the hemolocular adultery now for 16 years. And we really have only one, well, we have about four or five candidates that we're working on, but only one that's really established and grown and shown great promise. And that's what we're going to be establishing here, hopefully, uh, next month. Um, so you've got to discover it, you've got to quarantine, evaluate it for host specificity, you've got to do field trials to be sure it'll live out there, and you're not wasting your time, then you've got to rear the dang thing, you've got to figure out a way to grow it, which is, that is a chore in itself. Uh, it's really an art. And then the release and the post-release monitoring. So it's a, it's a complicated process that takes time. This is the bug that we're thinking about working with. This is actually the most common predator in the West Coast right now. And there are strains that are coming from the Seattle uh, Puget Sound area and also from Idaho. We're going to be working with the Idaho variety here, which is cold tolerant. Um, it's a beetle, a very, very small beetle, about two, two and a half, maybe three millimeters long. Um, and right now it's, it's in its adult stage. This is, which is over here, this is an adult here, and this is an adult here. 
Laracobius nigrinus, it's in the family Deridontidae, whatever that is. And here's the larvae. Gives you an idea of the, the, the mass. And it meets all different stages of the of the uh, hemlock woolly adelgid. And um, we're hoping that it gets established and then we can look for other agents. I think what we're going to be looking at is a suite of biological control agents getting established. Maybe a couple more beetles, maybe a fly predator. By the way, there's only, only predators in this bug, which is really interesting. There's no parasitoids, no wasps. It's one of the few insects I know of like that. My specialty are the wasps, but I'm getting specialized on these too. Um, are, they, are they protected from birds? With the woolly you know, birds are not an important predator. I, you know, I don't know why. Maybe that woolly wax is, you know, a very a detrimental to the bird predation. I don't know why. Um, I haven't, haven't seen any research on it either. So here's more data to put you to sleep. Um, uh, cold talking, right, 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 high rate of establishment. This is the thing that this bug, more so than the other candidates, is, uh, demonstrates a high rate of establishment around here, and that's very, very. Uh, very heartening. Um, so they've only released 20,000 so far. It's a, they're hard to rear, uh, and, uh, and, but we're working on it. <coughs> and this is it feeding on them. Here you can see the very early stages, right here. That's why it's one of the reasons it's difficult to detect in that early stage. So there's chemical controls. Here we have a one for bionic tree. Um, it's uh, chemical controls are established. This is there's different techniques. Uh, you can do individual tree street, individual tree treatments, are foliar spray, stem injection, stem spray, soil injection, or there's a tablet, new tablet format formulation. <coughs> foliar spray, as I mentioned before, it has to be so complete to get as, as to get everything. Uh, you know, mineral, uh, and that's I mean, just imagine what it takes to spray a tree. This quickly becomes uneconomical, um, but um, it has been used, and this is uh, actually Park Service crews here. Uh, there's horticultural oils and insecticidal soaps, which are less damaging to the rest of the biota than are the insecticides. It, and this is the oil is one of the main um, approaches for landscape trees. So those folks that are interested in their um, trees in their backyard. Um, that's a, uh, a non-pesticide uh, treatment that's, that's uh, available. And that, that just like decimates the numbers, but it'll leave a few survivors, the horticultural oils. In my, in my All, even, even the pesticides, you know, aren't 100% okay. effective. So, you know, there, there's usually a few that are left that just don't get the treatment. Especially in gorgeous. Yeah. I mean among a tree. You know, you may treat a tree with the metacloprid, it, it, it's hard to get 100%. <laughs> what, are, what are the environmental side effects of that? Uh, let, let me get to that right now. I'm just about, I'm just about to jump into that. Uh, one of the uh, most common uh, techniques that's been used is uh, stem injection. And uh, this is with a chemical called metacloprid that we were speaking about earlier. Um, it's it's really useful because of water and the effects of imidacloprid in, in, in an aquatic ecosystem. It's, it, it kills bugs, lots of them. And if it gets into the water, it affects the ecosystem. So when you get in these gorges right next to the creeks, 